What's going on everybody? I'm Kevin with Custom Night Vision and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to attempt to satisfy your gluttonous demand for more products in this super small niche market. Today we're going to be talking about the MH1. We're going to do kind of a quick overview, um, really just informative talk on this new product. So what is it? Y'all keep asking for more housings with more features and the guys over at Low Light Innovations have thrown their hat in the ring with the MH1. Initial impressions are fit and finish is very good. The articulation is nice and smooth, it's adjustable. Um, like I said previously, it does have manual gain, so we like that here. It is made out of magnesium. Uh, if you know anything about metallurgy, magnesium is a cool alloy used in high performance race cars and a myriad of other, other things. Uh, it has some interesting properties, one of which is that it is very lightweight. So this is kind of an, an interesting addition to a myriad of other aluminum housings on the market. Now you have something that is constructed of mostly magnesium. I think there are some titanium parts in here as well as mag, uh, aluminum, but again, mostly magnesium. So let's talk about uh, some of the other features on the goggle. Um, it accepts standard PVS-14 optics like we have all become accustomed to. Um, it is outfitted here with RPO 3.0, my personal favorite optic system. It also has two different illuminators here in the bridge. And there are several different levels of illumination, all of which are um, pretty high output. So if you're into having a super bright illuminator uh, on your forehead, well, this will do that for you. This right here is the gain knob, and this right here is the mode select switch. So you've got off, on, and then two different illuminator levels. Um, pretty high and then really high uh, from my experience. Uh, what else is there to talk about? So currently as it's being shipped, the unit comes with a single one CR123 battery compartment here on the bottom. There is no provision for a remote battery pack yet. There are a lot of things that were talked about when this was being rolled out about different modules that will be available in the future. I don't know if it was clearly stated that those weren't going to be available at the time of release, but just so you know, um, the monocular module or you know pod adapter whatever that's not available yet it's not a real thing the um, module for running remote power is not available yet as we are receiving it right now these actually don't even come with a battery cap lanyard there was initially a solution to keep this battery cap tethered to the housing but it didn't work out rather than wait on something else to become available they just shipped it anyway so you know be aware um, Let's talk about the pros. It's very lightweight. I'm sure it's very durable. We've been using it, I don't want to say extensively, but quite a bit. I've had zero issues. The manual gain functions well. Um, the knob is a little sensitive, but there is a mechanism inside of here where you can uh, adjust, I think, the ramp rate of the potentiometer inside the bridge. I haven't done that yet. How it is is fine with me, but you know, if you're super nitpicky, which a lot of you autistic people are that watch our channel and call us constantly, you might want to pop these screws off and adjust that to your liking. So it's cool that you can do that. Um, again, adjustable tension on the articulation. So you can turn these screws and tighten these pods up. One cool feature that a lot of people are probably not aware of is the left hand pod. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to call it axle pin but this screw here is left-hand thread. So again, autistic people that really just like things to be a certain way. Uh, yeah, it's left-hand thread on the left side and it's right-hand thread on the right side. Why that's necessary, I don't know. Maybe some complex engineering explanation, but there's that. Uh, it does have integrated IPD uh, adjustments. If you're familiar with the LL LOL 21, as I call it uh, affectionately. There's these little, uh, almost like an all thread in a little hole here that's internally threaded. 
And basically with an Allen key, you can adjust how deep these sit in this hole. They will protrude from the backside of the pod here and interface with the bridge to adjust your inner pupillary distance. So it's pretty neat, very simple. One tool adjusts everything as far as IPD goes. Um, I guess for full transparency, just some of the, the cons, or if I, ha if I have to say something bad about this housing, um, the power knob is a little squishy. Is that a big deal? Not really. I mean, it's robust. It's just got some play in it. Uh, some of the first people that got these shipped out had commented about that. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. But, you know, here at Custom Night Vision, we like to be fully transparent. And if I had to have one gripe about this housing, that would be it. So, I think that's everything I need to cover on the exterior. Um, I want to show you something on the interior that is kind of the reason why this housing is uh, so cool to us. Since we built all our night vision in house, this feature is kind of neat because we don't, we no longer have to modify uh, intensifier tubes as they come from the, the manufacturer. With other housings in the past and currently, there were different uh, methods to modify is the best term, intensifier tubes so that they uh, work properly with the housing that we're putting them in. They will uh, interface with the electronics. With the MH1, you don't have to do any of that because just like a PVS-14, on this uh, PCB here, there is a receptacle, um, if you like that kind of word, that accepts the standard four pin pigtails. So of course it's gonna be tricky to do while I'm on camera, but you just line up all these pins and squish it in there. So now this pod is utilizing its factory supplied pigtail to operate the manual gain. And what this means is potentially there will be less issues um, with your manual gain functionality. It will work more like it should uh, in a PVS-14 as it was intended. So no um, tricky stick on, you know, PVS-31-esque adapters. You just plug it right in, you uh, screw the pot on, and then it's ready to be collimated. Um, do I think this means you should build one at your house? Still, absolutely no. But it makes it a little bit easier for us, and it keeps the tubes in more of a factory format, which I think will make some customers more comfortable. Uh, previously, when we were doing a lot of the 1431s, we had to do, uh, we had to essentially make a pigtail so that the L3 tubes in particular would interface with the electronics in the 1431. It worked great. We didn't have a whole lot of issues with it, but there was some pushback from concerned customers that, you know, oh, is this gonna affect my warranty, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. It doesn't really matter, but it is a cool little uh, added benefit to go ahead and maintain uh, that factory configuration on the intensifier tube. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, let's go over the weight. So um, I have this MH1 housing with RPO 3.0 glass in it. There is no tubes in this housing. I just threw it together, uh, you know, so you have something to look at. I'm going to put this on the scale and then I'm going to put the two tubes on there. These are uh, L3 filmless tubes. Oh, I need lock rings. Got two tube lock rings. So with uh, the MH1 housing, uh, optics, lock rings, close focus stops, two tubes, we're at 433 grams, 434 grams. That's pretty impressive. Um, now let's weigh one with mil spec optics. See what that looks like. I'll just take this guy right here. Set it on there. You got screws. Optics. Optic. Optic. Because somebody's going to point this out. 
should have been better prepared. I'm sorry, forgive me. <clears throat> uh, eyepiece lock rings. Close focus stops. So that's everything that would be in the side of the device. Uh, we're at 400, or sorry, 538 grams. So with mil spec glass MH1 um, fully outfitted, 537 grams. That's pretty impressive. Um, what does this mean for you? How, how much do you value super lightweight goggles? How much do you value durability? Um, all these things come into play when you're making the decision on which housing to go with. Uh, like all the other low light innovations housings, the MH1 comes with a lifetime warranty. Um, from what I understand, they also offer a um, exchange program where, you know, if they come out with a new generation or version of this or they upgrade it, they will take your device back, modify it, upgrade it, swap it out, um, whatever, for no cost to you. So that's cool. Purchasing this is relatively uh, future proof. Um, I don't think they're going to come out with a drastically different housing. I could see them doing some updates in the future, but you know, I have no idea. These night vision housing companies are crazy with like what they tell people and what's actually going on. They're very optimistic. Not a bad thing, but it's just a weird market. <sighs> okay. So I hope I've answered all your questions about this housing, at least generally briefly. If you have any more in-depth questions, please feel free to call us uh, on the shop phone. That goes directly to my phone or Trevor's or Ben's at all times now. Y'all call in the middle of the night. I don't know why, it's crazy. Um, or you can reach out to us on social media, um, any of our personal Instagrams, the company Instagram, Facebook, Reddit. Please, guys, if you're watching this video, get down in the comments, tell us what you thought. If you have questions, uh, start a fight, be disrespectful, I don't care. We really appreciate it and go hit the subscribe button. We're trying to build this channel up. Um, the more subscribers we, we can grow this channel to, the cooler stuff we can do for you. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.